Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tehillim Treasures, where we will plumb the beautiful depths and treasures of Tehillim from the very beginning of Tehillim to the end of David Amelos masterpiece. This episode is brought to you by Chazak. Chazak is an organization that helps public school children become Shemri Tairu Mitzvahs, exposes them to the beauty of Tairu Mitzvahs. Imagine for a moment you're standing in a store or you're walking down the street. You know the neighbor. You've known them for many years. You see their children riding their bike in the driveway. And you know they're Jewish. But now there's someone who can help them take the next step. And that is Chazak with countless programs after school and other wonderful programs to help expose them to the beauty of Yiddishkeit. If you know someone or know someone that knows someone, that can help these children, then please email at psty at chazak.org. This episode is also brought to you by Chickens for Shabbos. Chickens for Shabbos is exactly what it says it is, plus more. There are many people, there are Melamdim's children, there are Agunis, there are Grushis. There are families that do not have simple essentials for Shabbos and for life. Whatever they need, Chickens for Shabbos is there to provide. Please do your utmost to help in any way you can. We now move on to the next two chapters of Tehillim, Perak Kufhei and Perak Kuvav, chapter 105 and 106 in Dov and Hamelah's Timeless Treasures. In this capital, Dov and Hamelah tells us, Dear Shu Hashem Be'uzoi, Bakshu fun of Tamid. Search out Hashem and this might. Seek his presence always. You know, there's many kapitlos that have overlapping themes. One of the themes that is overlapping is the theme of MS. Not only truth with a lowercase t, but truth with a capital T. The truth in the MS of MS of Hashem and Every person's own truth. MS is a recurrent theme, especially on Rosh Hashanah when we speak about the Malchus of Hashem. And how does one achieve MS? How does one find truth? There's only one way to find truth, and that is Bikush. Bikush means to search for it. You have to be mevakesh it. You have to search for it. And the search never ends because sometimes when you find truth, sometimes at a certain point, it seems like it's not your truth. It seems like the Torah is not speaking to you. And you have to fight through the clouds. You have to fight through the thicket of the forest. You have to fight through the trials and tribulations of life. But if you do, you will discover that there is always MS at the end of the road. Never stop searching. Bakshu, 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 vanov. You know, sometimes people don't realize that the bikush, the most pure and beautiful bikush, is the bikush of little children. Adults, very complicated and unusual pressures. But when you're a child and you don't know better, you can really, really believe that it can happen. Your Bikush MS is something that can last and can endure and can carry you. I want to share with you a personal story. Recently, Towards the end of last year, I had, last school year, I had some exit interviews with the boys in my class. At the end of the year, the last day of school, I meet with every boy in the class. And I assess with them how they did that year. And I give them chizuk. And I tell them to stay in touch. And I tell them how proud I am of them, etc., etc. And there's one boy who was exceptional. And I wanted to tell him how much I believed in him. And I told him the following. I said, I believe that you can become 
a gadol be Yisrael. I don't remember how many times I've said that in my life, but it's not often. I told him, you can become a gadol be Yisrael. And I was not expecting his response. He's a pure boy, good boy, from boy, a sincere boy. And tears welled up in his eyes. And the tears began to stream down his face. And I was very nisragish from this, from this moment. I was very moved. And I was overcome with emotion as well. And then I said to the boy, I know you're humble, but what do you think? And the shy, humble, pure boy looked at me and he said, Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's a bikush amas. He wasn't saying, yeah, of course, I'm going to do it. No chayla, yeah. Because that's not emes. He thought to himself, he heard what I said. It was overwhelming for him. But when a boy really thinks, maybe I can do this, and he pushes himself further and further and further, at the end of the road, you never know. At the end of the road will be a discovery of MS, and that MS can be the most beautiful and glorious thing you've ever seen. And now move on to the next capital. Capital Kuvav. And Capital Kuvav, David Amelech thanks Hashem for all the goodness He's given us. When He took us out of Mitzrayim, when he brought us through the desert and he gave us manna, and he did so many miracles for us, and he gave us the Be'er Miriam, and he gave us the Anane Kovid, and he brought them into Eretz Yisrael. But then, the tone of the capital changes. It's no longer us expressing gratitude to Hashem for all the goodness, but rather... We become whiners. We become complainers. Misoinenim. People who just find different things to complain about. Basically, the parashia is in Sefer Bamidbar of Shlach, Kairach, Chukas, Bolok. All of those parashias are encapsulated in what happened over here, including the story of Pinchas. So, the Jewish people, instead of being grateful, you would think, we're never complaining for the rest of my life. If somebody saved your life countless times and gave you miraculous manna from heaven and gave you uh, an income and gave you Be'er Miriam, Be'er Miriam was like having mineral water de delivered to your door every moment. The Be'er Miriam went through every little crack and crevice. Mom, you'd have to go out to get the Be'er Miriam. Came through the entire camp of Klal Yisro. It was beautiful. It was, and we were living an angelic life. The martyr was the, the food that angels eat. And we complained. And we just complained. We didn't stop complaining. At that moment, Hashem said, I have no choice. I have no choice but to expel you from the land. You're crying, you're complaining. You're worried? I'll give you what to cry about. And that's been the fate of Klal Yisrael for the last 2,000 years, but really for many, many more. Had Klal Yisrael ever complained, Moshe Rabbeinu would have taken Klal Yisrael in to Eretz Yisrael, and Moshe would have come, the Beis Amikdash would have been built 3,300 years ago. But that's not what happened. Because we were whiners, we were complainers, and we were very, very ungrateful. We denied the goodness that Hashem gave us. And when a person understands that Hashem ki ki like the first pasuk says, then it's a whole different world. I thank Hashem because it's good. And what if it's not good? It's good. It's not good. What are you talking about? 
Hashem's kindness is always good. It's eternally good. It's everlastingly good. A person has to realize that Hashem keeps score. He's taking care of us. He's doing what's good for us. And if sometimes things are a little difficult, we can't just become whiners. We have to accept His justice, accept His judgment, and then we can rise to the occasion to be the people that He wants us to become. The Medrash tells the story of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, who was married to his niece, and she would disgrace him in front of his Talmidim. His students said, why don't you divorce her? And he told them that the price of the ksuba was an exorbitant amount of money, and he could not afford to pay her that amount of money. One time after they were finishing reviewing Shir, Rabbi Yossi invited his Talmud, Rabbi Lozab and Azair, to come to his house and eat. And when they arrived, Rabbi Yossi's wife left the room with a very sour and angry looking face. And as she walked out, he looked into the pot to see what she was making for lunch and asked if there was something he could eat. And she responded, there was cooked fruit, but he looked inside and he saw it was fattened fowl. It wasn't cooked fruit, which would be a delicacy, it would be delicious. His disciple realized that Rabbi Yaisi and his wife are at odds with each other. And although he was initially quiet, when they finished eating, Rabbi Loza ben Azariah said, Rabbi, you have to divorce her. And I'll give you the money to do it. A short while later, Rabbi Yaisi divorced his wife. She was a shrew. She was unreasonable. And he divorced her. He then married a very kind-hearted woman. His niece, unfortunately, also got remarried to the watchman of the city. He was not Rabbi Yaisi by any stretch of the imagination. And not only was he not so nice, not only was he not so good to her, he also was an Amaretz. And then he turned blind. And his wife would take him by the hand and walk him around the city begging for donations. What a bazillion. And when she reached the street of her ex-husband, Rabbi Yossi, she didn't want to walk down the street. But her new husband was an expert in the streets. He was a watchman. He knew the streets well. And he asked her, why are you skipping Rabbi Yossi's home? He had heard that Rabbi Yaisi was very generous with his donations. Why are you turning away? She had no choice but to reveal that he was once upon a time my husband. She had never told him that before. And she could not bear knocking on his door and having to face him face to face. One time they neared the street of Rabbi Yaisi and her husband acted cruel towards her. She had no choice but to come to her ex-husband's home. Imagine the busyness. When Rabbi Yaisi realized what was happening, he bought them a new apartment and he supported them for the rest of their lives. She had mistreated Rabbi Yaisi her whole life. But Rabbi Yaisi could not bear to see her suffering. He would do whatever he could possibly do to make her life better. If we want the Rabbeinu Shalom to be forgiving of us, if we want him to be kind to us, then we have to always treat each other well. We have to always be grateful for the kindness he gives us. Because the Rabbeinu Shalom gives us always. And if we're appreciative of it, he will continue to give us. If we continue to give others, even when they're not so grateful for what we give them, that Hashem will overlook the times that we are not so grateful to the kindness that Hashem gives us. And He will continue to give us until we finally come to our senses and appreciate everything Hashem does. Until next time. Zaygizel.